Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we will reveal why casting node is bad and why you should never use it. Every tutorial for Unreal Engine out there is with casting, but nobody is saying how bad the casting is and why you should never use it. In this video, we will learn how to check the size of our files and how casting is increasing the size and slowing down your game. We will learn which blueprints can be used instead of casting and we will learn how to use collisions properly and without casting. Ok, so let's begin programming. Open your content drawer. I have created a folder called main, this one. And I moved the third person character into this folder, simply for organizational purposes. If you want to follow along exactly the same like me, you can right click, create a new folder. And you can name it underscore main. Everything I'm going to do in this course will be placed in this folder here. So let's go to content and tap the main folder. And I will create another folder. Right click. I will name this folder actors. And I will place all the actors in this folder. Now let's create a new blueprint actor. Right click. Blueprint class. Let's go actor. We're going to name this actor damage underscore heal. Save the blueprint. The reason why we are naming the actor damage and heal in one is because we will use the same actor to damage or heal the player with just a few clicks, which I will show you later on in the course. So this actor can be used to damage the player or heal the player. They're going to be placed in the level and it's going to work independently. So for example, we can throw this actor here. We can duplicate. And this one's going to damage the player and this one's going to heal the player. But for this later on in the course. I will just delete the sectors. Let's go to content drawer. Let's open the actor. Let's add static mesh. Just type sphere. We're going to choose static mesh sphere. And let's add sphere collision. Again type sphere. And let's go sphere collision. Let's name the sphere collision damage heal underscore collision. So at the moment the sphere collision is hidden inside this static mesh. In order to make it larger you should never use this scale tool here. So let's scale this for example 5. We have scaled the sphere, the sphere collision. Instead we should use here sphere radius. So let's make this default. So select the sphere and here let's make it 55. Let's make it 100 to make it bigger. For optimization purposes, you should never scale trigger boxes or collision boxes that are the same. You should never scale them with this tool. You should scale them here. You might ask yourself, but why there are two scaling tools? Here one and here another one. Well, for optimization purposes, you should use the sphere radius tool. So it's this one here. And that's the only thing you need to know. And don't worry about the rest. Let's add another component, box collision. So these two are the same, they are just different shape. So let's select the box and let's take it out of the actor so we can see it clearly what's going on. Once the box is selected, you see we have here different scaling tool. If you select the radius, we have this radius for the sphere, but if you select the box, we have x, y, and z. Again, when you have trigger box or collision box, you should never scale them here like this. For optimization purposes, just remember, collision box and trigger box never scale with this tool. Always scale with box stand. Okay, now let's delete the box. We're going to stick with the 
sphere collision for now. Okay, let's go to the event graph and delete all these nodes for now. Now select the damage heal collision, this is the sphere, and scroll on the right side all the way down and select on component begin overlap. For the beginners, th what this node does is whenever something collides with this collision box, something will happen and I will explain to you in a second. Now if you want your player to interact with this sphere, you've probably seen every tutorial how to use cast node. From other actor, drag a pin and type cast to third person character. What this essentially do is that when your player touches the sphere, something will happen. And if you want to use information from our player, such as health variable, so we can damage our player, for example, we will drag a pin from here and we'll type the name of the variable. And that's it, job's done. But here's the thing, nobody says how bad this is for your game and you should actually never use it. Now let's see why is that. Hover over the node and read the note. It says, this will cause the blueprint to always be loaded, which can be expensive. Let me show you what this means. So now with this actor, we have casting now, right? Now let's go to our third person map, open the content drawer, right click on the actor and click size map. What we see here is the current size of our blueprint. Don't worry about all these squares, just focus on the top here, on this one, because that's the total memory we need to see. So see, this is the name of the actor, damage underscore heal, and it says 200 megabytes on the disk size in the top right corner. If you select the drop down, we have here memory size. So this actor takes memory 110 megabytes, which is a lot. And please remember, there is nothing in this sector. So right here, we have absolutely nothing, just a sphere and sphere collision. So this shouldn't be 200 megabytes. Let's go to our size map again. This is because we are casting to our third person character and everything that character has, such as material, textures, blueprints, all of this will be loaded every time when casting. So this is all because of the casting of the third person character simply by calling this node. So even though there is nothing in our actor, we have just created a sphere collision and a static mesh, our actor uses all the memory from the third person character, just because of calling this node. Now let's close the size map tab. I'm gonna close it. Go to our content drawer. Let's go content, main, Right click on our third person character and select size map. What do we see here? Exactly the same memory, which was in this actor. But this is the third person character. So this third person character loaded everything into this actor because of simply calling the node. That's why this node is very, very bad. Because imagine if your third person character is maybe five gigabytes or, or 10 gigabytes. Imagine high quality of assets inside. And this damage heal, this simple small actor, is going to be the same size like the third person character. Simply with calling this node. And imagine if you have hundreds of actors with casting nodes, how much they're going to be expensive. So if this is 300 megabytes, imagine if you have 20, for example, blueprints with simple nodes like this, they're going to be a lot of memory, simply because of casting. That's why, again, you should never cast. Now let's close the size map again. Now let's delete the casting. Compile and save the blueprint. Now let's check the file size again without this casting node. Let's go to Content Drawer, Actors, Right click, size map. Do you see the difference? This actor is practically nothing in the game, considering it's just a few kilobytes in size. So it's 300, if you go to memory, 800 kilobytes. Close the size map and let's see another example of the casting. 
Now let's right click again on the empty space and type again cast to third person character. This time we are not going to connect with anything like this. We are going to simply put on the side. So even though this node is simply standing there, it's not even connected, it will still load everything from the character into the memory. Let's make sure this is correct. We're going to check the size map again. You see the damage heal actor is still loaded. And this node is not even doing anything. So there is a simple solution for this, how we can interact our player character with this sphere. Let's delete this casting now. And from other actor, drag a pin and type equals. Click on the equal operator. Now right click and type get player character. Connect this return value with the select asset. What we do with this is we are checking whether some other actor is overlapping with this sphere. And if that other actor is our player character. Since we have a boolean return value here, we must call branch to check whether this is true or false. We can either use a shortcut by holding B and left click, or simply right click and type branch. So control branch. Okay, so connect this boolean with the condition of this branch and connect the execution pin. So instead of using casting and kill the performance of our game, we are simply checking if this sphere is overlapping with our player by using the equals operator. Now let's see if this really works. Right click and type print string. We're going to put it over here. Now let's duplicate this print string by selecting and hold Ctrl and D to make a copy of it. Let's type in this print string player character overlapped. We're going to type in this one player character not overlapped. Now, if this condition is true, if our player character overlaps with this sphere, from true, we are going to simply call this node. On the screen, we are going to print player character overlapped. If something else overlap this sphere, we are going to print this message on the screen. Player character not overlapped. Let's compile and save. Now let's check it out. Open the content drawer and drag and drop the blueprint in the world. Now let's collide with the sphere to see what will happen. Have a look in the top left corner to see the printed message on the screen. Player character overlapped. Let's try again. So it's working. You see, you don't need casting to overlap this sphere. Now we see that this works with the player character. Now let's see how we can check if it's working if something else is colliding with this sphere. Now come up to this plus sign here, let's go to shapes, and this sphere here, drag and drop, let's put it a little bit on top, so we are going to make this sphere to fall down. If you play the game, nothing will happen, because we need to simulate physics to this sphere. Now exit the game, select the sphere, on the right side, Type simulate, check this box, simulate physics. Now let's play the game and see. We still didn't get the message on the screen that something else has overlapped this sphere. This is because we need to enable overlapping events to this static mesh. Exit the game, with the mesh selected, we can type here and generate overlap events. So there are two options, we need to check this one. So that way we are telling the engine that this sphere is going to generate overlap events. 
And now when we play the game, pay attention to the top left corner to see the printed message on the screen. Play a character not overlapped. That means something else overlapped with this other sphere. Now let's overlap our player character to make sure both conditions are working. So you see, if something else overlaps this sphere, something will happen. And if our player character overlaps, again it's going to trigger the event. Now again it's going to happen because this ball is coming back. You see? Boom. You see, we don't need to use casting to interact with other objects. Let's open the actor one more time to clarify one more thing. If we want to use information from our character, such as health variable, to damage the player, you cannot drag a pin from here and type the variable name. Instead, we need to use Blueprint interface, which we will cover in the following lessons. In this lesson, we learn how to avoid the casting. So in the following lessons, we are going to learn how to create and implement Blueprint interface. I hope this video was educational. I will see you in the next one.